Hello everybody, I hope you're having a beautiful day. I just wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about um, a dream and a couple of visions that I had. So I want to tell the dream first, but um, because in the midst of this dream, I had a bunch of dreams. Sometimes at night, I'll have a whole night of dreams, just a bunch of them. But sometimes I'll only remember specific parts of them to be able to share with the world. And I believe sometimes sharing dreams is good because, as I told another friend recently, another JB, John uh, Books, um, I told him, he told me a dream of his, and when he told me the dream, when I, when I heard it, it sounded beautiful. Now, this happens a couple times. There will be dreams that I have that sound really like either Maleficent or dark. But then either as time goes on or if somebody else talks to me about it, perhaps their symbolism or perhaps however they feel about it could give me insight. So, you know, in the past, I'll even get on the Internet and look up what different symbol means even throughout humanity or to other people, because sometimes I can have dreams about moons or the sun or fire or all types of stuff. But. When I look certain things up, it helps me conceptualize different symbols because ultimately I'm reminded of Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel in the Bible that the most high. And when I say the most high, I like to say I am because only the most high knows what's going on with anything because the most high who I am is receiving it from that which I am, if that makes sense. So um, the dream. I was in a, it, it appeared to be like a, a big superstore and I'm just using Walmart as an example, but it was like a big superstore and I, it was nighttime and I walked inside and when I walked inside, I turned around at the entrance and waited at the doors and a bunch of people were coming in. Now I'm going to tell, they were African American or, you know, people of African descent, but I'm not saying, I believe that's symbolic for family. I believe a bunch of. Anyway, so a bunch of African-American people came in, but they were family, but I didn't know who they were. And they were all standing in front of me, and we were just sitting there at the entrance. Well, then all of a sudden, my mom and my little one of my little sisters come in. And I was like, oh, what's up? And then family members that I knew started coming in. Coming in. So um, once that happened, uh, you know, all of a sudden, there's like a big raging storm outside. Now, disclaimer, when I talk about the African-Americans coming in, I'm not saying that it's only my family is African-Americans. That's I think that's symbolic for I think the African-Americans that I didn't know is symbolic for all peoples. But they were African-Americans symbolizing that they were my people in the sense that friends and family. So when I say that, I'm not talking about only African people or African-American people. I'm saying people who show love, respect, kindness, people are who are of who I am, my type of character. And so then. All of a sudden, inside of this big place or this superstore, because there was people inside shopping and everything, but all of a sudden, there was this huge, no, all of a sudden, after my mom and sister and different family members came in, I started to walk outside, and there was this big truck outside. It was like a pickup truck, and this big pickup truck was next to this random tree, and the tree was dead, but when I say dead, it wasn't like dead forever it was like one of like in the seasons of weather it was warm outside but the tree had like no leaves on it it was just branches like in those haunted ha haunted stories and stuff so then all of a sudden i'm inside of this big truck i shut the door and this raging storm comes out of nowhere i mean there's rain coming down you can see lightning going choo -choo. and then um the branches from the tree are hitting the truck now i look to my left to go look outside and i see like it's like dark but I can tell that there's a, a funnel out there somewhere and there's like a storm. But it's not like close enough to destroy me. But it's close enough to where it's like I'm not getting out of this truck. <laughs> I was freaking out. Because in my mind, the truck was like doing this. But it wasn't moving or sliding. It was just shaking back and forth. So in my mind, I calculated the idea that if I step outside and this truck is moving back and forth, I'm going to pew. So I'm just sitting there being patient. I'm kind of like afraid, but I'm not. I'm like, okay, just be strong. So then all of a sudden, I see my mom and little sister walking through the parking lot with going to their car. And in my mind, I'm like, what the f <laughs> I was like, what is going on? They're just walking out here in the parking lot. Now, there's like other people running back and forth, like trying to get in and out, but none of them are being harmed or anything. They're just like running. Like, 
So then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the storm starts to die down. And I'm just like, what the? So then I open the door, I get out of the truck, and I go back into the store, and we're all just there. And then I, that's the last part I remember, I wake up or something. So the next two parts are visions. Um, one day I was sitting on the couch, and I was on top of a, it was like all water. It was like a sea of living water, but it was like the most clean, beautiful picture. There was like the sun. It was like the blue sky. And then it was like all clean water, but the water wasn't dirty or anything. It was just like pure water. It wasn't like ocean water. So that, but I couldn't see through it. It was like that blue texture It's just water. So then all of a sudden I'm standing there on top of the water and it's just everywhere. Water and it's like the sky. All of a sudden this solid gold man comes out of the waters and he does it so clean it's not like a splash or nothing it's not like a it's like a, he just comes out of the waters and he's like a solid gold he's not like shining or like bright and he's not like he doesn't have any blemishes or like stains on him or anything solid gold all of a sudden the solid gold man just starts walking towards me and i didn't feel any fear or anything it was just like a, a instance of purity observing something and all of a sudden the solid gold man came and just and like became one with me and I came too. Well, all of a sudden, I'm like, man, this has to be something biblical. Let me let me look into the Bible. Let me look into the Bible. I don't know why I did this, but so I go, what I ultimately do is I, I go to like Google now, since there's Google search engines and search bars, stuff like Bing and Yahoo and all these different search engines. Um, it really helps with research too, because these search engines draw up websites, is what they do. So you're searching for something, but it draws up millions and millions of websites of databases of information. So I looked it up and I found a, a Bible scripture. I think it's from one of the prophets, Isaiah or somebody or Jeremiah. I, I don't remember the specific prophet, but it said, it said, um, I will refine me. I will use my gold to refine mankind to become the purest gold or something like that. I can link it up here. And it's like, um, I will refine, turn mankind into the purest gold and turn mankind or I will turn man into pure gold and turn mankind into the purest gold or something like that off the top of my head. And so then when I saw that, I was like, what the? F but then soon as I saw that in the Bible scriptures and verses, the a voice came to my mind and said, before you saw it in this Bible, I showed you on the inside first. And for a second, I went kind of like, Ooh, like, what the? F <laughs> and then I was like, oh, my goodness. Now, this last part, this last part was a vision, but it was like, and a couple of my videos before. So if you guys watch all of my videos, this is like the part where it's like, if you, if you buy all my books, you get all the information. No, my videos are free that I know of. <laughs> That's just a little joke. Um, so if you go watch my videos, I really start coming out talking about a year, a year and a half, two years ago, because it says a year, but it's like a year and some change. So. If you really go to where I come out and say I have like a I am or the word and then I start doing a couple of poems or it's like four poems and then the word. So if you watch my videos, I talk about a lot of my dreams and visions and spiritual journey and who I am and, you know, the particular battle I deal with on the earth. When I say on the earth, I'm talking about internal battles and the different concepts and people that come towards me that could cause me discomfort. Now, sometimes people will come and talk to you and give you certain things. And sometimes reproof is good. When I say reproof, I ain't talking about condemning people to their imaginary hells from Germanic paganism. When I am talking about the concept of telling somebody something that's they're doing is harmful and then it changes. It's not always my job to go teach everybody everything. You know, people have their own I am. They exist. And so then they learn and grow. What I want to say amidst these visions and dreams... Okay, so psychology and philosophy have made a couple of grave mistakes. Philosophy have basically created an institution where life just is, it's miserable, and we're supposed to bear it, and everything that comes towards us is negative and deadly and bad. Okay, you guys can see where that's coming from in Christianity and, and Judaism. I'm not saying Christians and Judaism are philosophy. I'm saying different people mixed into the Torah and different institutions. When I even say Torah, I'm talking about African culture. So I'm gonna give you an example. There's a man named Means Narmer. 
or they might be two men, but specifically means and armor. This man, Africa had all the stuff from ancient days. You're talking 10,000 BC and before that, because people don't just appear with pyramids and stuff. It's a gradual civilization over a long time. The Bantu people and different people in Africa have evidence that they're over 200,000 years old. And people and scientists are saying that science is over or um, humans have been here for almost a million years now. When I, when I say a million years, I'm saying this evolved branch of humanity because there's levels to this stuff. So outside of any of that, what I, okay, this last um, philosophy. Philosophy has created an allegory of the cave, and they've done a little bit of damage. But philosophy is really good, and it taught me that I can learn and grow outside of myself and create things like parables and ideas and stuff. But that didn't come from Greece and philosophy. That's why I tell people to tell the truth. It came from Africa. So, But they branched off and created something else. So, and then look at psychology. Psychology can be extremely helpful. It taught me to be careful from delusions of grandeur, delusional behavior, taking imaginations and creating buffoonery and destroying what's real with reality. And so also, but at the same time, they have stigmatized, created a lot of um, detrimental illnesses through the words that they use. And they have diagnosed a lot of people without any solutions. When in actuality, those same people that are teaching people to create, have a voice of reason inside of God and all this other stuff are then telling people that these things are schizophrenia and stuff unaware. You're supposed to have imaginations. You're supposed to have a voice of reason. You're supposed to think and calculate within and talk. But where schizo can be help helpful, that term, is when it starts to plague myself. And so when I am the most high, I can navigate through all of that. But the problem with people is we've never been taught that. If you look at a lot of these Asian cultures, they have been on a steady rock of self-awareness and self-empowerment by sacrificing certain things from the world. Now, when I say that, I'm not talking about people or killing people. What I'm basically saying is there are different things out here that could harm me. Not even just people like, don't eat this and don't do that and only print. No, it's concepts of the mind also. You're a body and a mind. And so that's what I tell people is good to like somebody could look at me and be like, I need to sacrifice cigarettes and I drink water and all that. those. That's healthy advice, but you're not inside of my mind. And so ultimately your advice is only just advice. And so that's why I tell people we each have our own kingdom. Um, there's something I believe in. I'm not sure if it's Chinese or Japanese culture. So if I'm confusing this, I'm sorry, but it's called the self palace, the palace of self. And it's like the eight. It's like the eight palaces or something like that, but the palace of self is the most high and important because like I've said before, what's on the inside is the most important because then that's what manifests throughout life. And so to this uh, final vision, in my videos from before, I talked about one time how I was, I was like, um, I'm just going to explain the, vision, the full vision again and then what this new vision happened afterwards. I was explaining how like I was getting towards a gate and I left the wilderness and I was like, I was getting closer to the gate and it, and like I heard a voice say, repent in the name of Jesus Christ, you can get in. And then all of a sudden I hear all this wailing and crying from the wilderness that I just left out of. And there's like all this crying, like, help, help, why are you leaving? Why are you leaving? Then all of a sudden I'm like right there. And then it's like, I will not bow, give my life to the children or a child or something like that. And so you'll know how that's connected if you watch like the full set of my videos. You know, when you watch people like selling books and stuff, they're like, I'll tell you the secret if you just buy my books. And stuff. It's funny. I, I feel like that when saying that. But anyways, so I was almost at the door and it's like, I will not bow give my life to a child. So then all of a sudden I hear all these children like, help, help, mom, dad, why have you left us? Why have they not followed the blah, 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 why have they left us? So then all of a sudden I like broke down. And like started to tear up and turned around and then went full like and back into the wilderness and so when i got inside i'm like planting road signs at every which way planting road signs planting road signs go this way go this way go this way and so i'm just going and going and going oh and all of a sudden i get a thought like man if i go too far in this wilderness i'm gonna be out here like that it's no end it's just keep going so then i'm like okay so i start to come back and as i'm leaving the wilderness again and as I'm planting these road signs, I'm planting like um, like lanterns and stuff, you know what I mean, to keep the light. Because it's like darkness and it's in the woods and all that. So then all of a sudden, 
I like start to break down and go, I cannot leave them in here like this. They didn't leave me or I wasn't left. Sorry. I am who I am. Can't leave them because I am that which is never left me. So, um, I am that which is, and I never left who I am. So all of a sudden, like my head turns into like, I don't know the head or what, but I, like I'm becoming this huge star, like and all this fires everywhere. And then like I have on a new robe, it's like a sash or something like that. And like I'm planted in the ground, and, like I'm this huge head. And all these people are like running out because everybody can see now. And all of a sudden, there's like these people at the gate. And I explained this in the last video. And these people at the gate watching from the wilderness are seeing me. And somehow I'm telling them like, you got to move on. You can't worship me or you can't do this and that and all this other stuff. So then they're like just sitting there not leaving. So then all of a sudden this little bitty boy that looks just like me. He's like me, but a little boy. And he's got curly hair and stuff. It's just like me. It's funny. So then all of a sudden he's standing by the gate looking. And he's like, I can't hear what they're saying, but in my mind, he's like looking like, who is this and what's going on? So then all of a sudden, when the people look down at the little boy, they grab his hand and they all walk up and I can't see any, like, I can't see them anymore. And I'm just in this place. So then all of a sudden, this is at a later date. I'm sitting on the couch, couch 2024. That's a joke. Sorry. So I'm sitting on the couch and this like, he, this figure I can barely see his face, but in his face, I can see he's got dark eyes, but they're like green, like the green fire I talk about in all the videos. And he's got like green aura coming off of him. It's not like a super glowing aura, but it's like a green aura. And he's got like, I don't want to say the Grim Reaper, but the dude's got like, he looked like me with green eyes, but he had like um a hood on and all that like this, like, you know, how, but the hood, even though it was like close to covering his eyes, it still had that long back like that. It was like this, but this, and I could see like the green fire in his eyes and he had a sight. He had like a, when I saw it, it was an ax, but it sounds cooler when it was a sight. So all of a sudden he came walking, like dragging this big ax dude. And he was at the gate that the little boy and everybody had left from. And this was some time later. And I'm looking up like, just like, what the fuck's going on? So then this dude takes this green, this ax that has like this green ore off of it. And he like smashes the gate the invisible gate barrier and he's like and it shatters right so then all of a sudden he's like walking towards me with the axe like and it's dragging and he's walking and he's walking and then all of a sudden like i'm, I'm not the crazy thing is i'm not terrified because i i look at him and it looks like me so i'm i'm looking down from him because my head's still the star and everything and i'm looking down at him and the act, he lets go of the axe, but it's still at his side. It's like leaning towards him. And like these ropes from my hand, because now I look and my hands are tied to like these ropes. It's weird. And these ropes burn off with the green fire. And he takes like this net. It's like I'm on a cross. It's the weirdest thing. It's like instead of being a star now, it's like I'm on a cross. And he takes me down. And he's like, doesn't violently take me down. He's just like, oof. And, I've, and I, he's holding me. And then like, he like hugs me. And like we become one and I wake up. It was like the most awesome, weirdest. Cause like in the midst of the end when the whole figure of the axe and all that, it wasn't scary at all. I didn't even, and a matter of fact, I didn't even see the, it was like it turned to a cross at the end and I didn't even realize it was a cross. I, in my mind, it was like a huge fire and I was like showing people out. So then like, and we, he like was like death itself but it wasn't afraid. It wasn't a scary or anything like that. It was just like, um, it was like me becoming one again with my other side. It's almost like, it's almost felt like I was just like all this good, 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 light, light, help, help, help. But then all of a sudden I came in tune with like my other side. Now when saying that you'll hear people talking about duality all the time and I'll hear people saying the devil and his kingdom and Satan and forever dark. And when I see that now, when I was a kid growing up, that used to fuck my brain off. But now as an adult, I see it. They're terrified. They're afraid of an aspect of their self and covering it with names and fantasies and cosplay. So I'm not telling people to go be dark and psychotic and dangerous. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about art. What I'm saying is sometimes the people let darkness consume them because they don't understand a part of themselves. And so when I say that, 
you see a lot of philosophers talking about the darkness and dark dark and we got to break out in the allegory of the cave and blah 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 and everything's destruction and death and we have to endure even though some of the prophets talk like that but what i am saying is it's time dude life is not death the world is not the devil we are not all evil man is not <clears throat> no i am relief i am comfort you know what i mean enjoy your life but what do I come with? The Ten Commandments and also other subtle little sayings. Because if I call them laws, I'm trying to say I rule over you. But what I'm saying is look at that like guidance. People will read a book and be like, oh, that was a great book. I learned from it. Learn from those sayings at the end of each of these. Let them guide you in subtle ways. You do, okay, thou shalt not litter. You then go throw something on the ground or have to litter or something. Don't afterwards be like, oh, I'm plagued. I've betrayed ye hen and wani, blah, blah, blah. No, dude. But am I teaching you to go litter? No. What I'm saying is don't plague yourselves. You're the gods. You're the kings. But respect yourself and the world and nature. So I'll give you an example. I don't even, I'll give you an example. A vicious animal is coming towards me and I have a weapon like hunting and I kill the animal. Okay, I survived. But if I go around with a with a BB gun or something harming innocent little animals and cats and creatures, that's murderous, unnecessary. Because we have domesticated those animals and we are different in civilization now. I'm not telling you to go catch rabbits and cats, although I've caught a couple cats and now they're domesticated. Dracula, the one I show on stream a lot. He's my little buddy. So, you know what I mean? And I got another cat too, Aphrodite, and another one, Flash. But Flash isn't mine. He's my stepdaughter's. So... You know what I mean? Um, life is a beautiful story. And write it. That movie Toy Story, that was a funny story. I like that story where the toys came to life and they were all, you know, so um, that's the imagination. Even like as a kid, we teach kids, have imaginations, have imaginations. Then we try to medicate them with, I think ADHD is overprescribed. A child is not, a child is learning from their perspective, which is full, pure ignorance. And when I say ignorance, I'm not calling children ignorant. I'm saying they are unaware to our concepts yet. So until they become aware, it's our job to protect them to the best of our ability. Diagnosing them and giving them medication, if it's not necessary, is not. Because when I say necessary, you have people that have legit severe mental illnesses, brain traumas, brain injuries, and are caught in severe problems. That's different when dealing with the medical institution. But if Tommy won't sit down in church for eight hours and pray on New Year's for six hours and blah, 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 that's not 80 fucking HD. Or if he won't sit in the classroom and likes to talk over other students, he's exuberant. He's exciting. I'm trying to tell y'all, you guys, and they'll be like, oh, we have to put him in special needs or do this and that. Okay, if you're going to create an institution of special needs, you all need to stop stigmatizing people and, and you all need to teach children to stop bullying because when Michelle Obama tried to do it you all call her all kinds of names right then you all created community standards Obama tried to bring health care for everybody but who complained but the people who are wealthy I ain't have to pay taxes and blah 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 you see how the system works when you try to help the poor and give them health care and cell phones for free and money and stuff like that it's a problem but when you give stimulus checks to everybody, oh, it's amazing. They don't care about the poor. And even oftentimes when I hear my own community talking, I'll even say the phrase when I hear African Americans talking, because my community is everybody. When I hear African Americans talking, they say all the time, oh, I got a job. I got this and that. I can do this and that. I got licensing and did this and that. You don't care about the mass of other African Americans. Because if I am in the ghetto currently, not saying me, but if I am in the ghetto currently and a terrible school system, and I'm already about 13, 14, and I never really had a good education the way some of these other people do. Then what do you want me to do? I, my only thing to do now is entertain or become a priest or pastor. That's it. Because when I try to get educated, it's going to cost too much money. And then I'm going to have to self-educate myself and get rid of all these other buffoonic-like concepts that I learned, right? That's why I say, I heard this one guy saying something really intelligent. We're not fucked. We're in a process. When they first came here, they were slaves. Then they had to fight and learn how to read and do all this other stuff. Then they had to fight and learn how to be included. 
Then they had to fight and learn how to be actually involved with intellectual. I heard another man say financial education. Good. We need to learn some of these laws. We need to learn some of these um, community guidelines. We need to learn some of these um, educational values. Just like I talk about Khan Academy, there are financial institutions that teach everybody. And my, um, you don't have to start at the top. One plus one is two. Boom. After you learn that, okay, Terrence Howard, dude, the reason... Here's my problem with Terrence Howard. And me talking about him is not attacking him. He needs to listen to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Science evolves just like people. It's called the scientific method. There's about five or six steps that I can link them or whatever. But the problem with Terrence Howard is he learned a theory. He learned something and now he's cemented to it. That's not how science works. When you, when you add things... Oh, I do not want to use that as an example. I have two leaves. If I take one leaf and another leaf, I added the two leaves together, and now there's two leaves. When you're multiplying something, you're not taking two leaves and adding them. When, when you take the aspect of multiplication, what you're doing is you have one leaf now, and you multiply that leaf by itself. You're not taking another leaf and multiplying it. That's not how it works. Because then that's one times two. You're taking one leaf and multiplying it times itself. But when you add one to itself, you're taking two leaves. It's two different mathematical concepts. So, I'll give you another example. To help edify. Okay. Now I have two sets of two leaves. So when I take one set of two leaves... And multiply it by another set of two leaves, I have four leaves. Right? Now, if I have one, two, three, four leaves, one leaf, two leaf, three leaf, four leaf. The concepts are confusing because they intertwine sometimes. I'll give you an example. The number one. If I was to take one times three, I'm not taking, th now this one doesn't exist. It is this three. I'm saying I have three one time. Two. One, one times two. This one is out of there. I'm saying I have one set of two leaves. One set of three leaves. Now if I multiply, if I take it to the next dimension, two, two, now this is gone. I have one set of two leaves and two set of two leaves. What Terrence Howard is doing is he has one and he's multiplying it by itself, saying now you have two. That doesn't exist. That's why I say when you learn using different concepts, you then need to learn again, learn again, learn again. And on your journey of learning, that's wisdom. You'll never be at the end with the knowledge. Because then after we're going or however you all concepts you want to create, then the next, the children learn and take our concepts and refine it and learn and make new. And so what I'm basically saying is people like Terrence Howard need to continue to learn and do science. When you're bored and at the level where you don't want to learn anymore, then you take what you have learned, refined it, refine it, and then go learn what you do want to learn. Because coming out telling people one times one is two you're, you're going to destroy a system of mathematics. And then what you did was you were an actor all your life and did all this other stuff. And now you're a mathematician. People look at me and say, well, now all of a sudden you were in the world of atheism and all this other stuff. And now you're a, a prophet. And now you're an angel of who I am, the Lord. Woo -woo. And don't watch none of my videos or understand anything I'm talking about. I have been in the field since a baby. Before mathematics, before science, before all this other stuff, I knew about God and Joshua and Moses and the prophets. And then as a child, I had to calculate all that for myself and lay in bed sometimes terrified and realize that the Lord is the one that comes and helps me when I am feeling afraid, when I am hurt, when things are going bad. With the same words that can be used to try to destroy through foolish theologians. The refinery. I have to, don't say that, don't say that either.
I was about to say something about pain and then Naruto popped in the back of my head and it's like, all right, you're teaching people that an aspect of learning is pain. That's why I don't get on here telling people because there's a saying, spare the rod, spoil the child. Okay. Y'all don't want to beat children into submission. I don't even like hitting children. I'm just being honest with y'all. But there is a point in time where you might have to turn a child around and pat and let them know. Now, I'm not telling you how to discipline your children. That's where the matrix gets fucked up. But I can give you guidance and then my voice of reason can stick with you. Me personally, I believe as young as you can, you talk to them as much as possible. I was talking to my children and my parents sometimes would be like, they're too young to know that or they're too young. To I'm not talking about sexual things and stuff like that. That's another topic. And me personally, I don't believe it's the responsibility of schools to teach children about sex. Now, you all have your own lot. You all have your own thing. I'm not arguing or trying to destroy anybody. What I'm saying is parents need to teach their children that stuff. Because what's happening is if a parent hasn't taught a child something yet and then they go to school and they get to talk about condoms and blah, 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 and the penis and all this other stuff. Then there's going to be a world of confusion and then the parents are going to have to piggyback on what the school did. So am I saying take it out of schools at the age of 18 or 17? You know, when you're older, it's good to have an education on certain STDs and stuff like that. That's what you should be teaching about. These STDs and, and diseases and all this other stuff that can be passed. And how teen pregnancy can destroy somebody's life if they're not ready to have a child. And they will be on public aid for a long time. Especially with inflation. So the point is, certain things need to be taught at home. Certain things need to be taught at school. The school systems and the gap of education between the wealthy and the poor needs to fucking end here. That's something I'd like to teach. You all keep trying to create an elite of people because this is what you're doing. Redlining, oppressed, trailer trashes, ghettos, um, hood areas, bad education, constantly picked on, a chance of being beat up, robbed, or drugs in the area. Super educated and smart and know a bunch of information. Bot, uh, nah. Information bot, I mean, automatic intelligence, emotional intelligence. What you guys end up doing is giving this all the money and power and putting this down here. This, becoming bored with life itself all the time, comes down here and goes, hey, become rich with us. Rap and, and tell your story about all this stuff. Then a generation of this comes down here, heroin and academic, rapping, gangsters and ghettos, and these get up here by teaching buffoonery, sending everybody down here. I'm going to link a video in this right here of Neil deGrasse Tyson talking to Joe Rogan. And the irony of it is pure hilarity. Now, who I link it through may have an opinion of their own, but I just want you to see the message behind what Neil deGrasse Tyson is telling Joe Rogan. I care about. OK, the amazing Lucas has been talking about something lately, and he's absolutely correct. And this is why a lot of us are having blinders on. Terrence Howard is almost like a HUD sucker proxy unaware. So you have corporation plants who know what they're doing but then you have people who kind of are like pure of heart who kind of get what's up my brother man who get trampled over because of this world terrence howard in my heart i believe is one of those people who are pure but are being manipulated and i'm going to explain why all these years they had terrence howard talking about hustle and flow boom dead trick and they funded him and gave him the money for it and he did his thing then all of a sudden, when Terrence Howard said that, uh, I'm not into that kind of stuff. I want to be more educated and more endowed. Now, they take him out of Hollywood. No more funding for that. Then when he comes up with a concept that he believes in very dearly, because it might make perfect sense to him. And it really does make a lot of sense with a lot of the things he says. He's putting philosophy and mathematics. And some of the things he say enlightens me. I listen to it and I'm like, oh, that concept makes sense. Ooh, I just learned something new. Ooh, 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 ooh. But at the same time, how they are putting him on these mathematic platforms talking about 
the lotus flower and zero i don't even i'm not gonna get into zero because they did that with um give me a second with the zero stuff with the one times one is two stuff and all this other stuff they're mixing concepts and confusing people addition is different than multiplication just like subtraction is different than division because a, a pot two right then you'll say two divided by two is one again right how does that work if one times a number equals that number then why does the number times the number equal back to one because what you're doing is if i have two sets of two and i divide it by two then it goes back to one because i took away one of the sets if that makes sense so let me make it a larger number so this makes more sense because even if you look at addition and multiplication, you can do that any which way. But you have to do multiplication first. But when you're dealing with subtraction, that's where PEMDAS comes from. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You have to parentheses, exponents, um, multiplication, um, Division, um, subtraction, or addition of subtraction. I'm sorry. So I have four. I have four leaves in total, but I'll break them into two sets, right? So I will say, or I'll make this with one again. If I take this four times one, I have four leaves. But if I take this four and divide it by all four leaves. Now I'm back at the original, one, if anybody understands how that works. But if that were subtraction and addition, I would say I have four leaves and I take away three. Now I can understand why that's confusing, but it's only confusing because I'm mixing subtraction with division. So if I'm only working on division, a whole other concept, people can create B sub mathematics too. If I have three leaves, and of these three leaves, I take it, that's an even better concept. Okay, hold on one sec. Okay, I have three leaves. If I take this three leaves three times, I have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now that's nine, but if I take three plus three, I'm taking this three plus another set of three, and now I have six. Multiplication and division are two different, multiplication and addition are two different concepts. That's where his confusion is coming from. He can't understand why there are different outcomes. I'll give you an example. If I take, that was funny. I'll give you an example. I can take, Nine times one, and I'll have nine. But if I have nine times ten, I have ninety. Because when you're dealing with that, all you're doing is going to a higher dimension of one. So then you have one, but then you have ten, but then you have a hundred. You're adding zeros to the end of the system. So ultimately, if you're outside of that higher concept, there is only one through nine. And zero doesn't exist. But at the same time, Zero does exist as a concept to map things. I'll, know, I'll now go to time. Time does not exist. But time does exist in the idea that, in the idea of moving, in the idea of mapping chemical reactions. So, in a world where there were no chemical reactions, I'd just be frozen like this, like a pitcher. But because of chemical reactions and things happening, and me being awareness that it's hap me being aware that it's happening, I now map it. So, okay, external stimuli. The sun goes up and down. We call that 24 hours. We have divided the time that it takes from the sun to go up and down to the same spot, 24 hours. Right? So... 24 hours isn't real. A minute isn't real. An hour isn't real. Time is relative 
based on the perceiver. And so if I am moving at 100 million times faster than what I am right now, I wouldn't move. And a second to the person moving 100 million miles per hour, to me now would be like 100 million years. I talk about this in my black holes video. And so that I'll give you an example. The idea of God being eternal. I'm going to tell you guys something real quick, just a concept. So if I help you with 99 things, cool. If this doesn't help you, sorry. Just simply say, this isn't for me, brother. Okay, cool. The idea of God being eternal and, God, and nothing existing before God. When God does appear or exist, or when who I am does appear and exist, that means everything before me was irrelevant and was not. Now that I am, everything ahead of time is. And in a sense that even that can be debunked, it is relevant because it helps me map and understand my surroundings in terms of whether it be religion from my forefathers, psychology from my forefathers, or science from my forefathers that helps me understand why this rock is spinning around the sun. But ultimately, none of those matter in a sense that I am the most high and all those are just concepts on pages and who I am takes them to create for who I am. So Terrence Howard, love your stuff. But back to what I was talking about. Now they're giving you funding to talk foolish in terms of science and mathematics after giving you funding to be bump that trick. bump bump. It's an institution of trying to make us look stupid because I guarantee you they'll take if Terrence Howard says a thousand genius things, they'll take 500 of them, take the other 500, make him look like a fucking ass with funding. Because the stuff he's saying with the lotus flower is no different than how, um, how basically gravity and mass and the law of attraction even works. So you have the center of something with the chemical reaction inside. Uh, people call them atoms. At atom. People call them atoms. And these atoms have a basic balance. And when they are unbalanced, they seek to balance themselves. And depending on unbalanced they are, ions and radiation, is how hardcore they will try to become balanced again. So when you think of a, when, you, when they talk about these bombs and stuff and nukes and stuff, all that is is a bunch of concentrated energy, extremely concentrated energy, that is unbalanced. So when it goes into the world, it radiates until it becomes balanced. When it radiates and becomes balanced with other chemicals in the air and other life, what it's doing is it's eating the chemical reactions that my skin right now. You will call this a solid. Strange scientific fact, nothing is actually touching. Then we call it a solid because of how large I am and how the energy works. And so I can't go through it. But certain forms of energy can UV radiation. So when you're dealing with things like different forms of warfare and different types of those chemicals not only can it go through because of its chemical balance or because of its atomic makeup it can destroy everything inside so to speak when you see uh disclaimer do not play with fire i'm gonna show you a couple things this right here it is a plastic container that has its own atomic makeup it holds hydrocarbons. What it does is, is these carbons are attached to hydrogens and it's pressurized in the system to where it's balanced. It's a liquid. If I were to then push this button, when it comes out into the atmosphere, it's no longer pressurized hardcore, creating a liquid, and now it's a gas. It's free moving, it's a free agent. When it's a free, what happens when this free agent is released, what's happening is when I spark it like this, that spark that you just saw is creating another chemical reaction. The two metals are rubbing against each other, and when they rub against each other, it's releasing a small amount of energy. It's tiny. But to the eye, so I'll give an example. To us, it's tiny, but if you were that atomic size, it would be boom, if that makes sense. Life is based on perception, just like black holes. We see black holes, and we're like, oh, it's violently big. But there are tiny black holes everywhere. I'm not saying... It's just energy being the drain. When you release water down a drain, that's sort of a black hole. None of the water can release and it's being pulled with the energy. So the high, when that small amount of energy 
breaks the bonds of these hydrocarbons that are released, it creates a new form of energy. So I'll explain. Now the carbons and the hydrogens, what they do is they split apart, and now it becomes C, it becomes, um, oh crap, it becomes carbon dioxide, CO, uh, oxygen attached from the air attaches to the one of the carbons, and the hydrogen attaches to one of the oxygens, creating carbon dioxide and water, H2O. Well, what you see from this plasma, when you actually really think about it, that's not an element, plasma or whatever. And it can be, but let me explain. What you're seeing is new chemicals, new atoms being created. In the midst of those new atoms being created, what you're seeing is the energy that's being released. So when the new water and the new carbon dioxide that's being created, you're seeing a more stable environment for that chemical or that atomic or the atomic makeup of those hydrocarbons. Because in the natural air, those hydrocarbons won't stay liquefied like this. They will disperse. It'll disperse freely when you just put that. But when you add a chemical when you add a catalyst to it or a spark, what ends up happening is it changes the entire chemical composition. This leaf. Cell walls and different atomic chemicals that make up this leaf. Um, atomic molecules. When they, if I take this energy and add it to this, you see how it's burning, right? You hear that, that's the energy. You can see the energy, you can hear the energy, you can smell the energy, the new chemicals being created. Now, what's happening to this leaf is basically what radiation does when it hits the body. It's different kinds of radiation, like UV, when you get x-rays, that's a different kind of radiation. But what you're seeing is, you're seeing the energy eat the current energy that's holding this together and creating new bonds with it. And now it's ash. So that's it's just a little food for thought, chemical science and stuff. As I told you all, I can dabble into many different aspects of life, but a lot of times I like to learn them first and then give my opinion. That's why I tell you guys, things like Google and YouTube are fucking brilliant. It's like we have sentience in the palm of our hand when guided properly. And so whose guidance is right? I was in the school system for years and was, but now that I have a base education and I know mathematics, language, science, and all these other things, because what I tell people, if you get involved with your own race and they go Africa, Caucasia, Asia, you're going to miss out on real information and, and logic and you're going to possibly hurt yourself in terms of mental awareness. So... I just like to teach people as much as possible and give them some information. Even when talking about um, the world, you, what you guys see is air. That's what we perceive it to be. And we'll talk about fish and the ocean and all that. The fish, I don't believe, perceive water the way we perceive water. I think they just are. They're in their environment and they're living and doing. So you see how I say I think because I cannot tell you what a fish thinks. That would be pure buffoonery. All I can do is give a part of my uh, imagination. So when, the reason I'm saying that is if you look at a cosmic background of the universe, you'll see that it's, a, it's different colors, red, green, blue. That's how they map energy. It's not actually red, green, and blue. What you're seeing is the wavelength of energy and that type of energy in plasma or whatever that's in that location and how it's mixed with everything else. So technically, even... Within the Earth's environment, the atmosphere that blocks a lot of plasma radiation, and so does the heliosphere from the sun, what we're experiencing is our natural environment. So it just feels like air. But possibly if another creature came to this planet, an alien or fish got out of water, it's like, or it possibly might feel like, they're trying to walk, and it probably feels like a, a bajillion pounds. But to us, this is our natural environment, and so it feels natural. You know, the Earth is spinning at like 1,100 kilometers, however what speed, and the sun is moving at 500,000, I, I, I can't remember if it's kilometers or miles, I'd have to look it up. But basically the point is, there's a lot going on that we are unaware of because of how the mind works, spatial recognition in our environment. As I've told you all before, you can't know everything. If you saw every wavelength, 
you would go mad probably. We wouldn't be able to perceive that in this environment how we see from purple to red, I believe it is. Or red to purple. And so, even in terms of color, somebody could come here and they'd probably be like bright weird lights everywhere and they'd be like, oh, I can't see nothing the way we do. Even when we go to other planets, I'm going to say something, but I don't want people to turn this into aliens. There could be life or creatures or different stuff that we can't even see or perceive. Like they could move at wavelengths and be forms of energy that we can't pick up on. And so even on this planet, this is just a part of my imagination. There could be stuff walking around or fly, doing anything that can't see us and we can't see them. Never be able to perceive each other because of the type of energy and the wavelength that it moves at. But also why that would be confusing is if there was beings that were that much higher level energy than us moving and walking around, they could possibly radiate us. And so and they would probably be detected. But if they were at a frequency or something that we couldn't even perceive with our technology at the current moment, then we wouldn't be aware of them. And so that's why I try to tell people. There is a level of science, religion, psychology, theology, you know, every different aspect. When you're at the middle, when you're the mountain, the rock, and you let other concepts walk up to give reverence to who you are, I am, that's simply saying using those concepts as angels to make me the mighty man who I am. So I don't go around talking about science and plasma and photons and all that, but it's in the data registry, data banks. So even when talking about the human consciousness and brain, the brain has memory. And within the memory, it can be recalled or pulled or uploaded at any time to help the user, to help the consciousness. So the consciousness is attached to the body and the body is attached to the consciousness. I am who I am. Neither one is greater than the other and both exemplify the total body. So, you know, I'm telling, uh, I tell people all the time, I said one time. Um, I believe scientists, and this is just based on what they think and understand, scientists said that in the hippocampus or somewhere deep within the center of the brain, energy is still moving around and calculating for like five or ten minutes after death. And do you not understand what can happen for five to ten minutes at the speed of light? Go, go research how far a photon can go within five to ten minutes, the distance. So I'm going to explain something to you. It takes light from the sun to get eight minutes to get to Earth. The sun is 93 million miles away. So I'm just basically telling people, like, enjoy what you have and live life, man, because anything, any concept can be used to destroy or make me better. And no weapon formed against me, no weapon formed against that which I am shall prosper or harm who I am. I am the creator and the creation cannot harm who I am, if that makes sense. So I'm not telling, so if you guys have seen Matrix 4 or any of the Matrixes, don't do what Neo was doing in parts of that movie. Disclaimer, they had him jumping off of buildings and bridges and all this other stuff, Vanilla Sky, the lady, drove, he jumped off or drove off the bridge and then he woke up. That's satanic type ideologies while it may be okay for the person enjoying entertainment, that type of shit fucks people's heads up. And when they are not mentally as strong as others, they go doing some crazy stuff. So I am the disclaimer and the warning. Live life in a beautiful manner. Honor thy mother, mother and father, the flesh that created your flesh. And honor your spirit and your flesh. Honor your consciousness and your flesh. And at the same time, protect the child, the total that's produced out of it, that one day becomes man or woman. So, and that means your offspring, and if you don't want to have kids, I see people a lot saying, I don't want to have kids in the world, so I'm going to step on But, so then teach other people, help the kids that are going to come up. Because what you're doing is, that's like saying, okay, now you're in a, you're, you're in a, a, you're in a pit, and all of a sudden, there's a lion, a bunch of lions are running in a pit towards you and like 10 kids. And for some reason, you have this power to where you can jump out of the pit and jump back in with no problem, but these kids aren't yet strong enough and they're jumping and they're only getting halfway. So when you guys say that, I see you all jumping out the pit going, oh, I see you motherfuckers. And as you're running away, you're hearing kids go, oh. When you had the fucking power to help the next generation. 
Okay, you don't want your kids to jump out of a pit and you don't want nothing to do with this stuff? Fine. Help others. All the time I hear people saying, life is hell. There's nothing we can do. It's a tormenting blah, blah, blah. Okay, thanks for giving the next generation of fucking future kids a bunch of this allegory of the cave philos bullshit, giving them nightmares and terrors and all this shit. Instead of being a strong pillar, helping them be strong, exemplifying how you survived through this hell. So, I'm just telling y'all, man, I think it's better. Back to not hitting kids. I mean, of course, if you have to, if a child is about to run the street and I continue to tell him to stop, my, one of my children, and then they run towards our student and I grab their hand and go, pow, on their ass, and I smack them across the face or tear them off with belts and shit, then they just learned a lesson. And I may grab them and give them love afterwards to let them know, I didn't hit you because I hate you. I didn't hit you because I'm angry at you. You almost ran into the fucking street. When I, okay, I'm talking to adults. Don't tell children that. Don't say fucking street. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is basically teach a child as much education as you. I'm not teaching you all to be like Chi Chi from Dragon Ball Z. Teach them what you know. Give them knowledge, information. When I'm around my kids all the time, I am telling them and teaching them and giving them. My daughter came, was crying to me one time, talking about hell, hell, daddy, I don't want to go to hell. And now fucking hell doesn't exist. So, enjoy your lives, because I'm not going to watch children be destroyed, nor am I going to watch this next up-and-coming generation lose all hope, because I'm not going to watch Harriet Tubman and people run through swaps and Malcolm X get shot, and different people burned alive and, and hung on trees and crosses, just to be like, oh, <laughs> if I say I'm Couch 24, that means I'm boycotting, I'm writing stories, I'm writing truth, poetry. I'm giving my word and story out there to the rest of the world. If I do vote, it's going to be for the left. Kamala, I'm just being honest. Anything else besides Kamala is going to fucking piss me off. But I am patient, but only to an extent, and I've spoken. So enjoy your lives. Enjoy what we have, because I'm not going to watch neo-Nazis from Germany continue to pump religion into a free country with separation from church and state. You want to be fucking conservative, go to China or North Korea. The reason I say that, I'm not saying they're bad places, is because if you like totalitarian dictatorship, go enjoy it. Which actually doesn't make sense to me, because I'm watching a lot of videos from independent Africans go to China and make videos, and all type of independent people from Europe. And China is one of the most beautiful. The Japanese don't be littering like that. They don't have trash everywhere. And they don't be disrespecting and destroying each other. Well, I heard Japanese were racist. So are fucking African Americans and Caucasians. I promise you. So, they can be when they don't have sense and are unaware. That's why I won't be accused when glorifying other nations. So, um, I'm seeing... I'm seeing real places in Russia where they have tall, beautiful buildings and those czar-like buildings. Those are beautiful structures. It's pretty. And Russia is t telling people that the world was African. That's why they don't like Russia. I'm just being honest with y'all. They want Russia done for. Because if they're Nazis, they, of course, they're going to keep attacking Russia over and over and over. But I am not going to let that shit prosper. Anyways, so back to China. Yes, there have been dictators and ut utilitarians. But if you have a problem with that, right, Chinese, and you guys keep talking about the Chinese, you should go do some research on the foreign, fa uh, the foreign fathers, the, the founding fathers. Everybody has a past and a story, so wake the fuck up and start coming together and helping each other. And if you are going to fry something or shine a line on something, let it be the stupid, enslaving, manipulative, lying, false religion, dogma, doctrine, bullcrap, and everything else that harms each other. Deep in the shadows, I know it's hard To put one foot in front of the other uh -huh. So far is the echo, where do we start? You can learn to discover a million stars Here in the shadows, I know you're scared Take my hand together, we'll make a stand We've got to fight to find a way Dare to fall to find out what to say No more hate 
Just admit that you're just afraid. Time to let go of all your fears and pride. Stand up beside me, don't you hide. We can build a better place if we can just find a way. Then we can live a better day. Rise from the ashes, from the anger, from the Let's come together, lift your spirit for the cause. We should be equal, should be live free. All together, one and all, let's build a dream. Better day.